conjugate acid. Right, you guys? Okay, so basically what's going on here is that this acid in the beginning started out with the hydrogen. This base ends up jacking this hydrogen, turning this acid into a conjugate base, and this base into a conjugate acid. Now this is going to have the hydrogen attached, okay, you guys? So the only thing that happened was that this H transferred from the acid to the base, turning this acid into a conjugate base and the base into a conjugate acid, okay? But enough theoretical examples. Let me show you an actual example now, okay? All right, so for example, you guys, let me just throw in some HCl with some NH3. And let me draw this nitrogen's lone pairs nice and big, okay? And don't forget your equilibrium arrows, right? Acid-base reactions happen in equilibrium, and you'll find out what that means in just a second, okay? But what's going to happen in this reaction is you have HCl, hydrochloric acid, and you have NH3 here. Nitrogen has some alone pair on it, right? So what's going to happen is that this acid is going to donate this hydrogen to this base. So if you look at nitrogen, nitrogen has a lone pair on it, right? A lone pair is just like an arm that can grab a hydrogen off somebody, right? So nitrogen is your base, so this base is going to go and grab this hydrogen off of this chlorine, turning this HCl into Cl-, minus, turning this acid into a conjugate base, turning this base into a conjugate acid. So, hey, NH3 is gonna go and grab this hydrogen, kick the electrons to chlorine, turning this HCl into Cl minus, and this NH3 is gonna pick up this hydrogen and get turned into NH4 plus. So it's gonna be NH3, but it's now gonna have picked up that extra hydrogen, turning it into NH4 plus, okay? So if you can't mentally see what's going on here, you guys, let's go ahead and draw in the curved arrows, okay? So you can see actually what's happening. All right, so nitrogen is gonna use its lone pairs to come and pick up this hydrogen. So nitrogen goes over, bonds to this hydrogen, shares two electrons with that hydrogen, but hey, how many bonds does hydrogen wanna have to it? Just one, right? So hey, when nitrogen makes this bond to this hydrogen, hydrogen's like, hey, chlorine, I don't need your electrons anymore. Get lost, right? So chlorine takes its electrons as a lone pair, okay, and turns into Cl-, all right? So hey, what happens is this. Nitrogen goes and bonds to this hydrogen. At the same time, this hydrogen breaks this bond with this chlorine, okay? So hey, nitrogen goes, picks up this hydrogen, turns into NH4+. Plus. At the same time, this bond breaks between this H and the Cl, chlorine gets this as a lone pair, turning this chlorine into Cl-, minus. okay? Do you guys see what happened here? Okay, so the next thing I wanna point out to you guys is that we see equilibrium arrows here. Why did we draw an equilibrium arrow like that? Why didn't we just see just a reaction arrow like this just pointing to the right like normal? Why did we do that? Because it can go this way too. It can go to the left also. It's reversible, right? So we said that if nitrogen goes to pick up this hydrogen, it's going to kick those lone pairs to chlorine, which causes HCl to turn into Cl- minus and NH3 into NH4+, plus, right? So if you have this happen, then this is going to cause the equilibrium to go this way to the right, right? But conversely, just like we said nitrogen could use its lone pairs to pick up a hydrogen, hey, chlorine has lone pairs here too. So hey, chlorine can also use its lone pairs to pick up this hydrogen. So chlorine can also use its lone pairs to pick up this hydrogen, kick those electrons back to nitrogen as a lone pair and cause the reaction to go this way to the left, right? All right, so this is just an acid-base reaction. Acids donate a hydrogen, bases can accept a hydrogen. Just realize that it can work both ways, okay? You guys, that's why we drew equilibrium arrows here. All right, so the question on everybody's mind should be right now, how do you know which way this reaction favors? Does it favor going from HCl to Cl- minus to the right, or does it favor going the other direction to the left? Okay, anyone know what we're basing this on? Okay, well let's write this down, you guys. This reaction, it favors the side with the weakest acid. Favors the side with the weakest acid, okay? And hey, you guys, according to GChem, what does it mean to be a weak acid? 
Does that mean you have a lower PKA or a higher PKA? Okay, okay, a more negative PKA or a more positive PKA? Okay, so if you're a weaker acid, then you're going to have a higher, more positive PKA than another acid. So check this out. What I'm saying is, let me just give you some numbers for reference right here. And these aren't exact numbers or anything, you guys, but this is just to give you a general idea, okay? So HCl, this guy's PKA is around negative seven. This guy's PKA is around negative seven, all right? NH4 plus, this guy's PKA is around plus 10. Oh, hey, can I ask you guys, how come we don't have a PKA for this guy right here? Does anyone know what PKA represents? PKA represents how easy it is for you to lose a hydrogen. This guy doesn't even have a hydrogen, right? So we're not gonna draw a PKA for him, okay? Plus, this guy acts as a base here, and that's why we don't have a PKA for this guy either. You only write PKAs for acids. The A in PKA stands for acid. Since acids are the ones giving up hydrogens, you have PKA to describe how easily they give up hydrogens. You have PKA to describe how easily they give up hydrogens, right? So if you really want to know, for bases, we have a thing called PKB, the B standing for base, and PKB stands for how easily a base picks up a hydrogen, grabs a hydrogen, okay? So PKA stands for how easily an acid gives up a hydrogen. PKB stands for how easily a base accepts a hydrogen. But you really only need to focus on one. We're gonna focus on PKA. So the side with the higher, more positive PKA, the weaker acid is the one that's favored, okay? So if the reaction favors the side with the weaker acid, and I'm telling you that the higher your PKA, the more positive your PKA, the weaker you are, then which side of this reaction is gonna be favored? To the right, where the PKA of NH4 plus is plus 10, or to the left, where the PKA is negative seven? Which side is gonna be favored? To the right, right, you guys? Yeah, it's gonna be favored to the right towards the side with the weaker acid. And hey, can I ask you guys, what does it mean to be a, uh, a strong or weak acid? Like when you say one acid is stronger than another acid, do you know what that means? Okay, so a lot of students like to define an acid's strength in terms of how strongly it holds on to its hydrogen. And okay, okay, you can say it like that if you want, but it can be a little tricky if you say it like that. So if you define it as how strongly you hold on to a hydrogen, then you'd think that a strong acid would hold on to its hydrogen really tightly, right? Really strongly, right? Okay, so it's kind of tricky to say it like that. So let me define it a little differently. And when you talk about how strong an acid is, a strong acid gives up a hydrogen really easily. A weak acid doesn't want to let its hydrogen go, okay? So, hey, let's do a quick demonstration to illustrate this, all right? Okay, so check this out, you guys. A strong acid, this is like a guy, like a man. This is like a strong man. And a hydrogen, this is like, hey, any of you guys when you were little kids, any of you guys have like a teddy bear when you were a little kid or anything? Yeah, okay, well when I was a little kid, I had a teddy bear. This is my teddy bear from when I was a little kid. His name's Bear Bear, okay? I brought him in for you guys to see today, okay? But anyways, little weak boys, they have teddy bears, okay? So pretend I'm a weak boy. This hydrogen is a teddy bear. So hey, weak little boys, they don't wanna let go of their bear, right? Someone tries to take away their bear like John the Bass. They're like, dude, that's my bear. Let me keep it, right? Get away from me, right? But hey, once you, once you mature into a strong man like uh, I did last year, okay, what you can do is after you're a strong man, you're willing to let go of your teddy bear. So you're willing to let go of your teddy bear without a fight. So you're like, okay, yeah, I don't even need it anymore. I don't need it anymore, right? So I let that base, John the base, take my hydrogen. I let that base take my teddy bear. And this is exactly like strong and weak acids. Strong acids are like, hey, I don't even need that hydrogen. You can go ahead and take it. Weak acids are like, oh, hell no, you're not getting my hydrogen, right? Okay, so. Check out what's happening here. Remember me, remember me, let me get my hydrogen. I was HCl, right? I was hydrochloric acid. Let's pretend John the base, he's gonna be NH3 in this example, okay? So what's gonna go on here is, I'm HCl, I'm a strong acid. So if you see me right here on this side of the reaction, I'm like, yeah, dude, I'll go in and take my hydrogen. I don't even need it, right? Because I'm a strong acid. But then over here on the right side of the reaction as Cl minus, then I'm like, dude, actually, you know, maybe I could still use that hydrogen on second thought. Maybe I could still use that teddy bear for like sentimental value or something. So I'm like, dude, can I get that hydrogen back? And John is like, oh, hell no, I'm keeping that hydrogen for myself. I'm holding on to it with my life. So I'm like, hey, please, John. But he's like, hell no, finders, keepers, losers, weepers, right? You don't get your hydrogen back. 
So hey, what this is saying is me with a pKa of negative seven, a really low pKa as HCl, hydrochloric acid, I was really willing to give up that hydrogen. John, on the other hand, when a base came up to him and is like, hey, John, can you hook me up with the hydrogen? Then he's like, oh, hell no, right? I'm keeping that for myself. 